just give me a second i'm gonna stop now no no seriously i'll start i'll start just give me a second i just need to chill I need to just gather myself you know just gather gather myself Whoa, whoa. Okay. Let's get started then, all right? I heard you, I heard you. Hey, gorgeous. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die. and welcome to my channel I'm Kupana Shumange and this is how I do things a show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things and I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice darling use it don't use it take it don't take it at all listen do what you will with it you know why because me I act more I am not a professional I am not a professional at all I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes honey I needed to sit down for this one because I feel like I've been through this. I continue to go through this. In my club, club she is a network for ladies who like to build their own lives and their own incomes and live their lives their way. We deal with imposter syndrome a lot. As a person who coaches thousands of ladies, it's literally something that we go through all the time. Just over and over again, these thoughts that, that, uh, the experience and the success I have, it's by chance. It's by chance. I'm just lucky. I'm just, I'm really lucky to be here. And also, you know, when there's expectations about you and your, your boss says that, oh, you know, she's really good at this. She's really good at that. She's an excellent speaker. Her presentations are amazing. You think that, number one, you're just like, listen, I don't think I match up to what they say I match up to. Or you're just like, mm. He's just flattering me. I'm, I'm just, I'm not that great. I really am not that great. Or you feel as though, you know, the expectation is for you to be such a good speaker and so great at presentations and so good at pitching, but it's all been luck. You have been very lucky thus far. You have no formula to this thing. You have no specific skill to this thing. And come the right project, come the right time, you're gonna stuff things up and they're gonna find out that you know what? She's a fraud. She knows nothing. She's here by chance. That feeling, that feeling that you're not as good as what other people expect you to be or as great as you think you are, that what you have produced and what you have done, that is all just by sheer luck. You are lucky to be here. They're gonna catch you out. Right time, right place, right situation. They're gonna catch you out for what you are. A liar. You're not that good, boo. You're not that good. It's a lie. The imposter syndrome is that feeling that you are in the wrong place. You are misplaced. You're not as good as you think you are. You don't match your qualifications. That you're not as brilliant as what people think you are. That you don't really know your job. You look at what you're doing. You look at your position. You look at if you're a manager, you think to yourself that, you know, you have a team and you think to yourself, I shouldn't be the one who is leading this. You know, you know, all the stuff that is in my job title and my job description. I, I don't think I'm that great. You know, if I'm put to the test, then people are just going to find out that, you know what? She ain't that great. She's not that good. That's what the imposter syndrome makes us feel like. It makes us feel like when we're somewhere we were not supposed to be. That we are playing, we're shooting way above our weight. But babe, you are not where you are by chance. You're not. My dad always told me that. It's like, we're not where we are in life by chance. We have been qualified for what we are doing right now. We are there because we have proven ourselves in one way or another to be capable. The imposter syndrome attacks us from all different angles and it shows itself in our lives, specifically in our career lives in so many ways. So today I'm going to tell you five ways that the imposter syndrome shows up in our lives, how we can spot it and what we should do about it. Number one, second guessing yourself. 
Okay, so the presentation's done. We're going to pitch to somebody new tomorrow. And um, oh, I'm just not, I'm not sure about this thing. I'm, I don't know if it's gonna work. Um, oh, I don't know, Let, let's just go over it for like two, three more times. Let, you know, maybe somebody else has a better idea. Um, let's, let's just ask around, let's just, just, just make sure. There's nothing wrong with going over your work. Checking over it just to make sure that you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's. Research is also good, but you should have confidence in your own ideas and in your abilities as well. You are not where you are by chance. You are not where you are because you are lucky. There's something that you did. There's some way that you show that you are capable of doing what it is that you do. So how do you know you're the type of person to second guess yourself? Do you have to be pushed into making a final decision where you just, you have your options and you want to make sure that you have a plan A, plan B and plan C and only when you're pushed into a corner do you make your final decision? Do you sometimes feel as though your team members aren't actually going to listen to what you're going to say? That they're going to think to themselves that she doesn't know what she's saying, you know, ugh, never mind her, that guy has a better idea. Is it easy for someone to change your mind? You've come up with an idea, you think it's brilliant, you've checked it out based on your experience and your knowledge, but somebody else comes along, somebody that you think is way more brilliant than you, they can put doubt into your mind easily. That's just a symptom of the imposter syndrome. You easily being able to change your mind, you feeling like you don't have confidence in the thing that you are doing and the work that you're doing, second guessing yourself you've made a decision but you find it very difficult to find courage in that decision or confidence in that decision and in your heart you're secretly scared that people are going to look at it and laugh at you because they're going to think that this person is an amateur amateur <laughs> honey you're not here by chance the thing about this imposter syndrome is is that it's a lie it's a long feed, a timeline of lie after lie after lie, and it's all based on fear. And it, yes, it is a real thing. You do feel like an imposter. Inside of you somewhere, there's someone who feels like you are here by chance. And that little voice tends to speak. The best way for you to get rid of this nature of second guessing yourself is to always remind yourself that you're not here by chance. Remind yourself of your qualifications, remind yourself of your experience and remind yourself of the reason why you were there. Even if you don't understand why somebody hired you, remind yourself of why you wanted to be here because you believe in yourself, because you think that there is something of value that you can give. Never forget that you have amazing value to put into the place where you are. Number two, if ever, oh forbid, if ever somebody asks you a question about your career, about your field of work, about your industry, and you don't know the answer, <gasps> you feel caught out. Your heart starts racing. You feel as though, oh my gosh, I am an absolute idiot. I am a fraud. What am I doing here? I know nothing. You feel as though you have to be an expert and know everything about the industry that you are in. This makes you feel as though you are lacking in some way, shape or form because you couldn't answer one question, because you didn't know the answer to a question or you didn't understand a specific piece of jargon. You know, when somebody's speaking industry language and you didn't understand what exactly were you saying? <gasps> So this happened to me once. I was on stage and I was speaking about natural hair and I was a natural hair influencer, specifically natural hair. And a company hired me to speak about natural hair and somebody in the crowd asked me something and I was like, sorry, what is that? And there is a moment right there when somebody's asking you about your field of work and you don't know the answer to that and they say something that you don't understand, you start to second guess yourself and you're just like, they were wrong to hire me. I know nothing. I'm actually just the worst decision you could have, you should have gotten someone else. I don't clearly, I know nothing. No, we're not expected to know everything. Even experts still have to learn and continue to grow themselves and continue to find out new things. How do you know you, f you suffer from the expert version of the imposter syndrome? 
do you feel like you need to know it all you need to know every single thing about your industry do you sometimes feel like a fraud you feel scared you feel embarrassed if you can't answer a question or don't understand a specific term in your industry when you're applying for jobs do you sometimes feel like i can't apply for a job unless i am overqualified so as soon as they mention one thing on the job description that you've never done before or isn't in your cv you're just like i'm underqualified i could never ever do this job that is the imposter syndrome where well, you feel as though you have to take every single box you have to know every single thing or else you know nothing at all do you sometimes lean on knowledge and if somebody shows you that there's a hole in your knowledge then it makes you feel like a fraud and it makes you feel inadequate and sometimes incompetent that is just a symptom of the imposter syndrome that you feel like you need to be an expert not just any expert but the best expert who knows everything and anything about the field of work that you are in honey it's a lie you don't have to know everything an expert is a person who's always open to learning somebody who understands the industry and in, even if new things come along they're able to break down concepts understand them and apply them that's what makes you a expert you're able to learn understand and apply whatever it is that is going on in your industry if something comes along in your industry you've never heard of it before get excited that oh there's something new happening or something that i didn't know that much about no i don't know about that but i will go find out more about it or can you tell me more about it it sounds very interesting always keep your cup half empty so that you can always be filled with new information and stay excited about the industry that you're in number three i feel like this one is the ultimate this is the one that we all suffer from the worst everything you must tick every single box every single box or else it's a flop it's an absolute flop otherwise known as perfectionism perfectionism is a form of the imposter syndrome and it's one that is very very common how do you know if you're a perfectionist you're a perfectionist if you feel as though if this thing doesn't tick all the boxes then it is useless it's either all right or it is all wrong that nothing leaves your desk until you feel as though it is 100 percent you feel incompetent inadequate you feel less than if you give over work that you feel as though it is not perfect and guess what a lot of the times you feel like it's not perfect at all you just feel like your work never meets the mark that there's a benchmark that you set and no matter what you do you always aim for it but your work is always here this is a perpetual cycle of feeling bad about yourself feeling like you haven't done a good job being good at your job is about excellence it's not about perfectionism because your version of perfection is not the same as somebody else's version of perfection and on top of that there's no such thing as perfection so you are chasing an impossibility which will always make you feel inadequate so if you feel as though your work does not meet meet the mark if you feel as though your work is never perfect remove that because that is a lie you are providing value you are providing the best value as long as you always strive for excellence instead of striving for perfection of what you're giving strive for perfection of timing because there's no point in giving the perfect project at the wrong time it doesn't count anymore you've missed your deadline no one cares about that thing we've all moved on care about timing and giving your best at the right time number four is one i suffer from quite a bit i have to do it myself if somebody else does it they don't know how to do it the way that i want it to be done they're going to do it wrong and they're going to mess it up and i'm going to look bad for it i know somebody else is like this and it's a he <laughs> You feel as though your idea is the best. You feel as though your way is the only way. And you also feel as though if I don't fix these flowers, then they're not going to be right and everything's going to be wrong. This form of imposter syndrome makes you overwhelmed. It makes it difficult for you to delegate 
any activities you feel as though your specific signature needs to be on everything for it to be perfect because if you don't oversee everything then something's going to go wrong somewhere and if something goes wrong somewhere then someone's going to catch you out for being a fraud people who feel like this also feel as though no one understands what i want no one's going to understand my vision no one is going to do it as good as i can do it but here's the thing no one's ever going to do it as good as you can do it but if you rely on good human capital if you rely on good people who have experience in a specific thing then they're going to do it better than you can why for example how i do things i film every day and then i edit every day right but I also run my social media and I also run my business. So my attention and my skills can only be this much. You can't be, you, you, you can't be a master of all things. You can, it's either you're a jack of all trade and a master of none. However, if I hand over the editing to somebody else, all this person does all day, every day is editing. That means they've got more time and they've got more focus to learn new tricks to perfect the art as opposed to me i have to still focus on other things meaning that i don't have the same time and attention to give to editing as a person as somebody else does an editor just edits they know editing better than i do if you're an event planner feeling like you have to do everything yourself there's a person who arranges flowers and that's all they do all day every day they are just learning about flowers arranging flowers so the best thing you can do is oversee so that you can give the chef the time to do what they know best and that's cook. You can give the flower lady the best time and, and the best attention that she can give to the flowers. And then you can do your best as a coordinator, as a person who's able to orchestrate. Remember that an orchestra cannot play beautiful music full of flavor and color if the conductor feels like he has to play every single instrument himself if you want to create beautiful music you have to learn how to hand over work to people who know how to do it people who focus on that one thing so that you can focus on what makes you amazing Number five is the one that I also struggle with more than number four, and that is I can do it all. I can do everything. I got it, I can do it. You feel overwhelmed, you're the first one in the office, you're the last one to leave. People keep adding work onto your plate. You add work onto your own plate. You feel as though if I work hard and everyone sees me working hard, then at the very least, they can say that I'm a hard worker. This comes from a place of feeling that my qualifications are not enough. I don't know enough. My value is not enough. Therefore, if, if at least they can see that I work hard, then, then they can't call me an imposter. They can't call me a fraud. So that at the very least, okay, if my work does not speak for itself, then the very, very least thing is that I'm the hardest working person in this office. You feel like you need to prove yourself. You feel as though, you know, if, if, if my pitch is not the best, if my work is not the best, if my work is not perfect, then at least they'll say that I'm the hardest working person in the office. It's the worst feeling. I've been that person. I used to come in on Saturdays. Uh, I felt so inadequate. I felt, and, and I felt unseen. And I just felt as though, you know what? Because I'm not employee of the month and because I'm not getting praise for the work that I do I felt as though everything that I'm doing must be wrong. I was the first one in the office I was the last one to leave. I came in on Saturdays and I felt miserable at the end of the day the imposter syndrome and feeling like you have to be the hardest person hardest working person in the room to prove yourself will make you hate a job that you actually love you don't have to be you don't have to prove to people that you're the hardest working person in the room. Hard work is not a bad thing, but you need to have confidence in your value. We live in a world where you will burn out. You will finish yourself. You will hate your job because you work too hard. There is such a thing. You need to strive to work smart. People who feel this form of the imposter syndrome, you don't have personal time. You feel guilty when you rest. 
you always feel like there's something to be done you always go the extra mile you actually go the extra mile on top of the extra mile you feel like you have to be the hardest working person in the room or else everything else is going to fall apart the work that you hand in the value that you give how you are doing your work the results that you're getting aren't going to be enough to get you that promotion and they aren't going to be enough to keep you where you are they're gonna figure you out girl you're a fraud so at the very least to secure your position and to continue to secure this bag you have to keep being the hardest working person in the room and that's not true you do have value you are amazing work smart always think to yourself am I being smart here or am I just trying to be the lowest of the low working hard and working my fingers to the bone and giving my everything for this company and not even having time for myself not having time for my hobbies not having time to read a book no balance it it's a lie you don't have to be that person you are valuable you are not here by chance you are here on purpose you have something valuable to give and that's why you're here there's nothing wrong with hard work, but it shouldn't come at the expense of yourself, your health, your personal time, and your well-being. All right, my honeys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this one. This is, all, this is for my ambitious ladies, the ones who want to grow, the ones who have a career, the ones who want to keep working towards the top. Remember, the imposter syndrome comes from a place of a lie. It comes from a place that believes that you're inadequate, you don't have enough value and you know what they're gonna catch you out because you don't know what the hell you're doing you know what you're doing you do have value to give and you're not here by chance you're here all on purpose hope that you guys enjoyed that one please do share this with a friend with your girl who is just like honey you work hard and i don't want you to ever second guess yourself ever again until next time beautiful people i'm kapana shmang and this is how i do things Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and thank you for subscribing. Please don't leave this channel without subscribing and giving this video a big thumbs up and leave me a comment and let me know which one of these five types of imposter syndrome symptoms stood out the most for you. Until next time. Mwah.